9-11. Yeah, 15 years. That's crazy. I was actually in Boston when I heard about it. Well, north of Boston. I was at school. High school. That's why I went to school. Story on that, maybe. Or even the location will be revealed one day. If I'm ever up that way, I'll make a video of the place. But it was a nice... It was a nice day in Boston, or north of Boston. Clear sky, and that was about, I don't know, 275 miles away from uh, New York. About, maybe 250. No, a little less if you go to Manhattan, that's actually less. That was about 40, 48 miles, I believe, my house was from the middle of Manhattan. Um, yeah, that's crazy, 15 years. Yeah, I remember I was outside, it was around like, you know, whenever the first plane hit 9 in the morning or something. Plane hit the Twin Towers. I'm like, what? No way. No way. So, and then, yeah, freaking plane was into the Twin Towers. Then another plane was in the Twin Towers. Then the building collapsed. Oh, no. I, didn't, I obviously didn't even think the buildings were going to collapse. I was only, what, 14 at the time? I believe I was 14. Next day... Um, yeah, well, you know, a lot of people died, you're just like, shit, everything was just destroyed over there. Next day, I obviously was still in Boston, it's cool. No, that's what they were telling me, oh, you're from New York, right? I'm like, yeah, it's like, call your parents, make sure they're okay. I'm like, they're okay, we're so far away from there. Well, call them anyway, so I called. Yeah, and they're like, oh my god, planes hit the Twin Tower, ah. Think of all the lives lost. I know it's crazy. So next day, like my dad went down there with my sister. I actually took the getaway wagon. Getaway wagon. He said it was just like covered in dust. Those roads, you know, <laughs> covered. He said this car actually. I think he got better access. It kind of looked like an undercover police car or something. <laughs> so he got pretty close, and of course, it was uh, dad was. A firefighter, well, retired at the time, but yeah, he was like right up at the buildings, like the structure of the buildings, what was left of it, the exo structure. He was right there. My sister, he was crazy, and the dust. He got pictures, man. That dust, it was thick. Maybe even thicker than that with the snow. Yeah, all that freaking dust was all over this car. It's probably still in there somewhere. The toxic dust. Yeah, that was pretty wild. I think it went down a couple other days after that. I don't remember. I wasn't there, you know, so I can't tell you. <clears throat> and then a week after that, I, yeah, like, it was probably the weekend, whatever that was, nine, you know, I think it happened on, like, a Tuesday, was it? So it had to be, like, uh, probably, like, a Saturday. It went down there in, like, a nighttime in uh, lower Manhattan. And all I remember was like dump trucks, dump trucks, dump trucks, dump trucks. Well, that's not all I remember. There were just lines of dump trucks all over freaking Manhattan. And they had these weird little, um, they built like these little, I don't know, it's almost like a little booth they built, but it had a power washer guy in a hazmat suit. And every truck that was coming out of there got power washed. And I don't know what happened with that dust. Because the trucks just get so trashed by that toxic dust. But the air was safe, right? Bullshit, the air wasn't safe. Yeah, I remember that, which is pretty eerie. I don't know what the heck of street I was looking down. Maybe like Liberty Street or something. I was looking at, it was like a little, little you know, from far away. Because I had it closed off a week later. And think of like between those two cars, like a street. And you just peer down that street. And you see all the work lights. And you just see like the remaining um, structures of those two buildings. Or whatever, maybe only one of the buildings is visible like that. But you just see the exo structure that was still um, standing after the buildings came down for, um, I don't know, what is it? From, I don't know, it's pretty far away. But you know, you saw the steel and the light on it, it was just like an eerie sight. I still remember it. I don't have a picture of it, but it would have been an eerie picture, especially in the nighttime. Yeah, I believe, I think it was. I don't know where it was. It was, I believe I was standing right by where that old weird uh, Trinity Church is over there. If you ever look at that up, that's a pretty cool old church. And then there was some weird symbology over there too. There's, what the heck? 
um, I don't know, about the tree that died from the 9-11. They tried to, like, save it or plant another tree, and it died, and then they they replaced it with another kind of tree, and it's, like, symbology. It's in the Bible or something. I don't know. I don't really follow that too much, but it was pretty crazy when you think about it, the symbology. That was actually put there, and what is it? It says two buildings will fall, and it will emerge as one, which is kind of strange, which did happen. But yeah, 9-11, man, 15 years ago. That's crazy. And then, of course, you know, living in New York, you heard story, stories about kids my age that lost their one of their parents, or maybe even both of their parents. You know, they were firefighters, police officers, they worked in a building, whatever. It's crazy. And it forever changed. Yeah. What I feel though, honestly, um, living here now in Florida, people kind of forgot about 9-11. They, they don't, they don't get it as much as someone from the area, like New Jersey, New York, whatever. Maybe even D.C. area. Cause that D.C. area, I don't know what the heck. There can be, uh, some, some shit that happened to the Pentagon. I don't know. That's, that's, I still... I still question that, but yeah, they they understand it, and I think that the people who've never seen those two buildings or never been to Manhattan, they they don't get it because obviously they never saw it. Every weekend, we used to take the old white truck. When I was learning how to drive, I used to uh, take it over there to Queens, Jamaica Queens. We had another uh, house over there. Well, it was my grandma's house before she passed. <clears throat> and on a clear day, what the heck? I believe it was the Grand Central we were on. Um, you could see the towers. And then like, the first time going back in that way, you couldn't see the towers. And it was just like, damn. It's like you thought when you're traveling back that way, you're like it was someone was lying to you, like those towers didn't fall down. But no, they were gone. Which is kind of a weird feeling. Yeah, I don't know. That's her story. Well, yeah, like I said, I don't think here, I don't think people get it as much. Which, you know, everyone's entitled to their own thing. And then some people, I guess, you know, you can't say they don't get it. Some people just don't want to talk about it. And I agree with that, too. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't really like that remembrance, you know, shit happened. What are you going to do about it? You know, you really can't do much. Sometimes when you remember shit, it just brings back bad memories, and you don't want to even want to go down that road. So, it's our video of the day, pointing at uh, cars on our point and shoot with uh, crazy hair. Crazy hair? Huh? Yeah. Crazy. Don't forget 9-11. A lot of guys died. Yeah, and then after that, um, me and Pop just go to like the little funeral memorial parties for some of the firefighters who died. It was crazy. One after another after another. It was just like, ah. And then that was just the firefighters, you know, the police, the, the Port Authority, and then all the civilians in there. Think about it. It's crazy. <clears throat> So, that's her story about that. It's kind of a crappy story, but it's a story, like we were saying the other day. Have a good one. Don't forget. Oh, and for the uh, B-Body fanatics, so, you know, FDNY, NYPD, a Port Authority, they had a bunch of caprices. And even wagons, they had the 182 uh, SEO wagon, which was like super rare. And these things are just lined up at the Brooklyn Banks. Look at that. of the popular uh, skating area. It's right by, like, the police headquarters underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. And these things were just sitting there one by one by one, covered in the dust, just smashed. Because they're, I guess, underneath, maybe the, around the building. Maybe some of them are actually underneath the building. And this this crazy, the destruction. I think I have a couple of pictures of that. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, just stacked as high as you can. Crazy. And they all just stored them over there because I don't think they had any room and it was the closest location. They are like basically like taking them in. You just saw people like uh, loaders with forks on them like they have at the junkyard one by one just taking cars out. You'd think like the people who drove those cars there, 
they might not be alive anymore. So that was the most eeriest feeling too as well. Especially, you know, even with the fire trucks that were all blown out. They drove them there, the lights, even some of the lights were still running. Well, not when I was there, but you know, like a couple of hours afterwards, the emergency sirens and shit, the trucks probably were still running, and that whole crew was just dead. It's wild.